and a very good evening to you again hello if you are watching on the little live bit uh, before nine o'clock in chat hello again chat i hope you are all well um it is um it's a strange old show today we've it's been kind of moving around during the day bits and pieces coming up and popping up here there and everywhere so it's kind of changed and then changed again and knocked a little thing off and moved another thing well i'll get there in the end uh, <laughs> as we do uh, we've got a bit of vt from fox news in the states which is rather encouraging um really i've got a bit of vt from nikki sinclair we've got mr mark modmaker jones back in part two for his second part of the three-part penguin mod build that we started last week uh, and all that is very much after the titles and they're coming up now. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Yes, indeed. Good evening. Good evening to this Tuesday, the 25th of February 2014. Very nearly payday. Yes. In fact, I think I'm getting paid in two days this, this time. Yeah, not on the end of the month, but the day before. Why? I don't know. Do I care? No. As long as the cash goes into my bank account. <laughs> uh, yes, it's been a strange old, uh, strange old week. Um, uh, two years and a week now since I started vaping. Uh, and uh, today has been rather strange. Uh, little bits coming up here, there and everywhere. Uh, I've got to say, the backroom team, Dave Dawn, keeps firing me things uh, and I keep picking them up, which is, to <laughs> which is just great. We just keep firing things around all the time. Um, so as I said, pre-titles, we've got the second part of uh, Mr. Jones's mod making where he uh, changes a penguin kind of sweetie tin into a mod. And I've seen the whole thing. Um, so um, next week is going to be good because you're going to see the finished article. Um, but yes, in the second half, uh, you'll see the second half or the second third uh, of uh, Mark's VT. Um, and uh, I've got a few news stories. This is from last week. Um, and this is in relation to a, a, a fire that Dorset Fire Brigade um, posted on their Facebook. And I'm just clicking through my other pictures so I can actually see what you're seeing. Um, Yes, this was posted last week um, and purportedly caused by a badly charged or possible short circuit in an ESIG. Uh, that's the, uh, the bigger picture. And if you see over in the, uh, in the corner where the sockets are, uh, you'll see that. Uh, and that to me looks like that was probably where it started. Maybe. I don't know. Looks like something exploded quite, um, quite nastily. Um, but this is the... Uh, this is what the uh, fire brigade said. Uh, this is the photo from property fire today in Parkstone Road Pool. The cause of the fire is believed to be the charging of an e-cigarette. If you are charging e-cigarettes or any other type of electronic smoking device, please only use the charger supplied with your kit. Uh, don't mix and match components from different e-cig manufacturers. Never over tighten the battery on the charger and other little bits of advice there too. Um, which, of course, if you are a, a hardened vapor, like most of us are, you will know that you shouldn't really over tighten. You shouldn't use a charger from a different supplier with the battery because it could be incompatible. Um, but that is the same for laptops, for mobile phones, for anything that needs to be recharged. You should only use the charger that comes with it. Um, and that way you should be safer. Um, you can buy these little charging bags and I might get one just to have a look at um, and you can put your batteries in there and if there is an issue it's contained within the bag. I do know that uh, Liberty Flight sells something like that so I might have a look and pick one of those up so we can have a look at it. Um, but yes, 
It's all about being sensible, really. I never leave the house with anything charging. Um, and when I go away, when I go to Scotland tomorrow, for instance, everything in my little office come studio gets turned off. Um, it's only on when I'm in the house or around. Um, but uh, for batteries, always, always unplug them um, before I go to bed. I never leave them overnight, just in case. And I've got a full fire alarm system in my house, but still, I don't particularly want to get woken up at three o'clock in the morning with a fire downstairs and I've got to get downstairs to get out of the house. Um, so yes, very, um, very dangerous, obviously, but you know, the same thing can be said for anything that we charge, any batteries. Um, so we just need to be mindful that yes, on this occasion, it may have been an e battery, but it could have been a laptop or it could have been a camera. It could have been a video camera, it could have been anything. Um, so common sense really prevails, doesn't it? Um, what have we got next? Yes, I think what we'll do next is we'll have a bit of VT. Uh, and Kat showed me this uh, this morning on our Skype chat. Um, so I've brought it down from Tinterweb for you to have a look at. And it's a piece from uh, Fox News in the States. Have a little look. Thanks, Leighton. Well, the FDA released graphic ads to scare you away from smoking. Hey, when I say pause the movie, we pause the movie. Come on, big boy. Pucker up. Cigarettes are bullies. Don't let tobacco control you. Turns out smoking is bad for you, you may not have known. Federal government reminding you. Well, now they're targeting new electronic cigarettes, but could they be looking to regulate the one thing that could save smokers' lives? Sally Sattel, an old friend of mine, is a resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute. She's a physician, a psychiatrist specializing in addiction, and she joins us now to weigh in. Sally, thanks for coming on this morning. Thank you. I'm a little confused by this. We know, I think for certain, that e-cigarettes are less harmful to smokers than tobacco cigarettes. Why wouldn't we be in favor of that? Right. There is no question that they are far safer than cigarettes. They don't combust tobacco, and so there's no gases and tars to cause cancer. Now, the FDA has not yet ruled on it. They were supposed to rule back in October, and they haven't said anything yet about how they're going to regulate it. But we know that they want, we know that certain municipalities, including the city of New York, have restricted the use of e-cigarettes on the basis, as far as I know, of no scientific evidence that they cause harm. It's true that many uh, municipalities have uh, banned smoking in places where, excuse me, I should say vaping. It's a very important distinction. One vapes uh, electronic cigarettes. One smokes like Marlboros. And it is true that New York City, Chicago, many others have prohibited vaping in, in bars and even in public. Uh, and uh, those are local uh, decisions, uh, but the FDA has not yet made any proclamation about uh, marketing and regulation. And to, to be truthful, it should probably re uh, regulate manufacturing standards and labeling uh, um, practices. There's no question about that. And they will probably, I would imagine, ban sales to minors, right. people under 18. And that makes sense, too. But otherwise, I believe we want to make e-cigarettes as attractive to smokers as possible. Well, of course, but I, I guess I'm so struck by the willingness of policymakers to pass laws on the basis of no science, claiming they're acting in the, the public's interest but not having no science to, to back it up. I mean, isn't the, the real issue here is that smoking is unfashionable and that rich, well-educated people don't smoke, and therefore people who do smoke or evape are fair game. Well, actually, they're, they're quite concerned about uh, young people. That's really one of the main targets of concern. The most, uh, even, the, even the most vociferous critics uh, recognize that e-cigarettes are far safer for smokers uh, than, than our cigarettes. Uh, you will get the nicotine, but remember, the nicotine is not what's harmful. The right. nicotine is what addicts you, and that's why we don't want minors to have access to them. But it's the smoke uh, that kills. Uh, but um, uh, we don't, uh, as I said, they haven't yet made their, their proclamation on it. Yeah. And um, 
we want to do, uh, we do want to keep it out of the hands of, of young people. They're concerned about a gateway effect right. uh, that uh, young people might start vaping and then move on to, to cigarettes. And that yes. would be a very bad outcome. And this is something we have to follow. But the CDC data that exists now show that smoking in youth is at an all-time low of, of 18%. Course. And e-cigarette uh, use has gone up a little bit. So if, if anything, if we can interpret those numbers, they're still pretty small, but if we could interpret them at all, they would suggest that actually young people who are smoking are probably using e-cigarettes well, to get of themselves off cigarettes. Of course. That's, that's why reality needs to guide our policy. Sally Sattel, joining us live from Washington this morning. Thanks a lot for coming on. I have to say, I was rather encouraged um, about the Americans, having seen that piece this morning. Um, that lady was talking so much sense. Um, and I wonder whether the Americans are watching us, watching Europe. Um, to see what we do and what happens before they wade in. I don't know. Um, but, you know, we, we all know what the, what the truth is. We all know what the reality is. And, and good evening, Nikki Sinclair, by the way, in chat. I've noticed you're in chat uh, and uh, saw it on our Skype chat. So welcome and thank you for all your efforts um, that you are doing on behalf of the Vapors. Um, not including, of course, or including, of course, uh, the visit you've arranged for next Tuesday and Wednesday that uh, Davey and Dave Kay are going on and will be showing us footage of as uh, soon as possible. Uh, and I've got your little bit of video, uh, Nikki Sinclair, I've got your little bit of video that was out yesterday, so um, you can close your eyes when that comes on if you like. Um, but uh, this came out today, tonight, um, from the European Respiratory Society and the press release, the news release, is dated tomorrow. Um, and they are saying that the European Respiratory Society welcomes vote on EU legislation to make tobacco products less attractive to children. The European Res Respiratory Society, I might just say ERS, um, welcomes the vote for a new European Tobacco Products Directive in the European Parliament today. In particular, hopes that new legislation will reduce the number of children who start smoking. I'm not going to read the rest because you can see that. Um, but also on their page they have this. Um, Dear MEPs, vote for this compromise on the Tobacco Products Directive. Support further national measures which, such as plain packaging and 100% smoke free. Well, i just got one little thing for you ERS. Vaping is not smoking. So uh, you can have that one. Um, we all know that smoking is not good for you, and we all know that children smoking is not good for them. But, as we have all said, if it was a case of either a 15-year-old starts smoking or starts vaping, I would rather they started vaping, because vaping is not smoking. Uh, and we know that it is far, far, far safer than lighting up. Um, it just is, isn't it? Anyway, I've got another story for you in a second, but let's have Nikki Sinclair's video. Here it is. Hello and welcome to the European Parliament here in Brussels. One of the most contentious political issues of the last year or so has been the proposed new European Tobacco Directive. This has been plagued by allegations of inappropriate influence from the tobacco industry, by suggestions of bribery and shadowy backroom deals. It's even led to events that result in the resignation of the responsible commissioner, although he has strenuously denied that he actually resigned. They certainly do politics very differently here in the EU. One of my main concerns, however, was an attempt to re reclassify e-cigarettes as a medicinal product. This would have led to a requirement for extremely expensive testing, a process that would have been prohibitively costly to e-cigarette manufacturers. It could, indeed, have shut the companies involved down and led to job losses. It is also the case that many people have reported the health benefits brought about these products. I have consistently opposed this move in the European Parliament and will continue to do so. We do not need the EU to legislate on this. If we give people the information they need, unfair and unbiased facts, then they can make up their own informed decisions on whatever to use, e-cigarettes or so. It is for the people to decide on where their best interests lie. 
they do not need more excessive and expensive legislation. And that is quite simply what we demand the Referendum Now party is all about. Whether it be single issues such as e-cigarettes or whether it be a major constitutional issue, a constitutional issue such as our continued membership of the EU. It should be for you, the people, to decide. We want the people to be allowed to decide through a binding in-out referendum guided by honest and accurate information on whether we continue to be members of the European Union or whether we should leave. At the moment, we have one foot in and one foot out. This is bad for us and it is bad for the EU itself. David Cameron promises that he will renegotiate terms of our membership. The EU elite have consistently stated that no serious renegotiation is possible. In fact, they actually want us to make up our mind. They want us to accept the full Federalist agenda with a full integration and all that entails, or to leave, in or out. It is as simple as that. Thank you. And that's what Nikki said yesterday. <laughs> and you've just seen it yourself, Nikki. Um, yeah, wise words there, and it is a bit of a pickle. And I would really like to know how much money the whole TPD and the whole Article 18 and all these different amendments and all the MPs that have to be there to vote and all the work around it, I'd like to know how much that's all cost because it's been a lot of money, hasn't it? You know, it's been a lot of money. Right, it is just coming up to 17 minutes past. So we're going to go to the break uh, and when we come back, I've got some more bits of stuff uh, and then we've got Mark's modding video and whatever else I can come up with. So I will see you when I find my adverts. There they are. I'll see you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Now it's back to Vaporscene on Vaportrails TV. Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. And it is. Welcome back to part two. Just watching chat as I do during the break, uh, and uh, it, it goes by quite quick. If you're watching this on catch up and you don't join us live, please come along live because, as Dave Dawn always says, and we all agree with him, we've got the best chat in the world um, because things just happen on that screen up there 
uh, during the show and during the break, uh, and a lot of information comes out. Um, and from what I can gather from the chat there, just lobbying alone, tobacco lobbying alone from the companies, the tobacco companies and the pharma, you know, it runs into about 160 million a year. That's just lobbying. That's not even what it costs us um, to have all the work done over there. Um, plus, of course, I'm not mentioning the B word that someone said in chat, um, plus that, um, but also um, the amount of money that the UK give to the EU every day, every month, every year. Um, and I'm just glad that we never went Euro because we'd be in, in it even worse, wouldn't we? But anyway, I digress on that one. Before I move on, Hugh asked me uh, in chat before the break, uh, whereabouts in Scotland, and it's generally Kilmarnock and Glasgow. I should be in Glasgow tomorrow night, uh, which has got a great 4G signal, so I should be able to watch Team Talk. Hey, hey. <laughs> Um, and Thursday, I'm in Irvine, which has got a really bad Wi-Fi signal, so I probably won't be able to watch VTT, uh, VT Talk. Uh, um, but I'll have to watch that on catch-up, like everybody else has to sometimes. Because uh, I'm not back until Saturday afternoon. It's all good. It's all good. Um, anyway, it's also today Andrew Sutton's birthday. And I sent him a message earlier, and I offered him a cake, and he said... Anyone any nuts of it? Are there any nuts in it? And I said, no. Do you know what he said? <coughs> what do you mean there are no nuts? He did indeed. <laughs> no, he didn't. I just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, so happy birthday, Mr. Sutton. Um, I hope you are having a lovely day. And he's been working on um, a new show. I can't tell you what it is, though, I don't think. Um, but he's been working quite hard today on his birthday. Bless him. Never mind. So let's move on to another story. What have we got? Let's have this one. This is on vaping.com. Uh, this was out earlier on today. Um, and it is saying that 105,000 smokers will be killed every year by TPD ban on e-cigarettes. And if you go to that particular um, address there, you can see the whole thing. And it's too detailed to go into in lots of detail. But uh, this is the next slide I had. Um, there were some questions for government officials. Why have officials not done any economic modelling of the health impact of their ban on high nicotine e-cigarettes? That's one thing. If I go to the next one, um, there's lots more. Um, e-cigarettes gain support. There's tobacco volumes are plunging. And if we go to this one, there is a link on the bottom of that particular page, that blog, uh, and it links to that little document. Uh, and I'm going to have a little look at some of it. This is one of them. Um, it's quite long, and it would take us too long to go through every single piece of it. Um, but according to the most recent estimates from European Commission, tobacco remains the single largest avoidable health risk in the EU, accounting for nearly 700,000 premature deaths each year. Around 50% of smokers die prematurely. Smoking prevalence in the EU is still high, with an estimated 28% of the adult 15 or older population, since when has a 15-year-old been an adult, um, being regular smokers? The percentage corresponds to about 120 million smokers. If I go to this one, the use of e-cigarettes. Uh, in order to assess the possible impact of the proposed ban, we need first to consider the different functions that e-cigarettes may play for smokers, ex-smokers and non-smokers. Smokers may use e-cigarettes to assist them in quitting attempts or to reduce tobacco smoking. Ex-smokers may use e-cigarettes to help keep them off tobacco and because they feel the need to continue consuming nicotine. Non-smokers may use them as a recreational devices. Since when have we wanted non-smokers to use e-cigs? <laughs> if you don't smoke um, now, then why do you want to start? And even though we know vaping is much, much better for you than smoking, if you don't do it already, don't. Why? <laughs> so um, I, I, I don't see the point in that no smoking bit. Anyway, next bit. Um, so 2.2 on this. Um, in the space of little over two years, e-cigarettes have gone from almost naught to overtake all other smoking cessation aids. By observing a correlation of the evolution of the use of e-cigarettes and other methods, 
we can make some inferences with respect to which alternatives are more readily being replaced by e-cigarettes. We find that e-cigarette growth has the strongest negative correlation with prescription NRT in medicines such as Champix. Yeah. Uh, this can be interpreted as an indication that e-cigarettes attract those smokers who would otherwise resort to prescription methods. It is also clear from the graph, and you can see the graph in the, in the whole thing, uh, that as e-cigarette use has gone up, all other smoke quitting aids have gone down. Interesting that, isn't it? E-cigarette use goes up, NRT goes down. Big Pharma profits go down. Hmm, interesting that one, isn't it? Uh, now I've got another one here which is uh, that one yes so inadequate choices facing high nicotine e-cigarette users in some the two and a half million Europeans who use the high nicotine e-cigarettes along with those who would otherwise use the devices in future if the ban had not been introduced faced a set of alternatives none of which are particularly attractive they could switch to low level nicotine e-cigarettes they could move on to gum and patches and of course if you've had gum and patches, that's why you don't use them anymore. They could just give up smoking unaided. Some of us have, some of us haven't in the past. Alternatively, they could return to tobacco smoking, which provides sufficient nicotine along with the hand-to-mouth and warm in inhalation, which attracted them to switch to e-cigarettes. Which of course, forgive me for just coming out again, which of course is what Big Tobacco want. They want us to go back to cigarettes because then we've got the money going to them again. But then, of course, Big Pharma want us to use NRT, which means that they get the money. Anyway, let's go back. A final consideration is the development of an under-the-counter market of illegal e-cigarettes, which would be subject to no regulation. Hmm. All of these choices deserve further research if policymakers want to make fully informed decisions about such a critical area for public health. It's quite a long document. Go along to the... Uh, to that address, the blog there, vaping.com forward slash TPD, um, and you'll find the link there for the PDF, and it's got the graphs and all the other information. Um, I'm just looking at chat there, it was going across. Um, yes, so it's strange, isn't it? E-cigarettes are becoming more popular than NRT at getting people to stop using conventional cigarettes um, because they find it well, nicer, really. They want to continue using nicotine. They want it in a safer way. Um, and NRT use declines. And then who's unhappy? We're not unhappy. But the pharmaceutical companies are unhappy. And big tobacco are unhappy. What can I say? Oh, and just in case you know, vaping is not smoking. I just thought I'd put that in there. Uh, and yes. It's, it's something that's going to go on and on and on, isn't it? But tomorrow, of course, we've got more stuff coming out. Um, and um, that should be interesting to see exactly what happens. Um, yes. OK. Let's have some joyousness now. Uh, and we're going to go to the second part of Mark's mod. Oh, yes. Here it is. Enjoy. Vapor scene does. Tin your tip. Tin your tip. Tin your tip. That incredibly easily. In fact, that drilled too easily. It's gone right the way through to the next size, I think. Yes. Hmm. What are you? Problems, problems, problems. Okay, swearing over for now. I've drilled it out too far. And it's always a possibility when you're working with something like this, that's going to happen. It's not the end of the world. It might seem like it a lot of the time, but it's not. I'm going to take one of these finishing washers and that actually sits rather nicely in there and I'll mount the 510 connector straight into this that'll give me some a nice base to work with it shouldn't look too bad so this hole now 
I'm just gonna take this one very gently, take a couple of steps at a time and figure out what I need. two steps and definitely gonna need these two more I think. Find the top for it. And um, no. Top's too big to fit through that hole so it won't press. So if I glue that in place, so you're gonna have a nice little button on the inside. I get it. Now then, I have corrected the problem with the atomizer connector by adding it to one of these finishing washers, as I said which just involved grinding out the inner diameter very slightly and then basically hammering it into position so it's push fitted basically and pop the wires through so that's going to sit rather decoratively I think on the back so that'll just need to be probably epoxied into place I think and the next major job I've got to do is get this switch which I've added a couple of wires to fixed in place down here. I'm going to hold it in place initially with some super glue. Before I do that I just want to drop down the two pins I'm not going to use. Indeed the other two as well. Just so they don't interfere with things. It's basically going to sit like that. So I'm going to dab the four corners just to hold it in place initially. position I need. So it's just a matter of holding it. The glue's had a chance to set now. Uh, the only reason for adding the glue is just so it doesn't move around when I'm working on it. As when I put epoxy around it I don't want it to come out of place as it could jam the switch on the case then. So on with the epoxy I think. At this point I can put most of the components in place, barring the actual circuit board, which I'll have to solder up once they're in place. 
and then finish off. So once you've got to do an even mixture. It's just going to be a matter of and a good covering over the switch to make sure that nothing shorts out on anything else. And a layer basically to hold the battery connector in place, or battery holder I should say. Making sure that the holder itself is going to be sitting as far across this side as possible to give me room to work over here. fit in place. So I shall let that set off and then back early. So I've gone ahead and I've also fixed in the 510 connector so pretty much ready to start putting the board in place. Start off with the switch, I think. So, if I just pop the wires out of play, out of the way. These two black wires are for the switch. And it doesn't matter which way around these go, it's just a switch. So. As I've tried to keep the wires as short as possible, it's a little bit awkward working. switch in place. Next one will be the two wires for the atomizer, which are these two wires here. I've deliberately left the wires on so I can remember which one is positive and which one is negative. Yes, I got caught. I was watching that as it was happening. I thought, I'm, I'm sure it's going to finish now. Oh, it's finishing now. <laughs> uh, yes, that was part two uh, and the third and final part of the mod making from Mark Jones will be on next week's show. Uh, as two, I'm reliably informed, will be a nasty, juicy, juicy for those of you that like seeing Davy suffer. <laughs> um, hopefully I'll have that for next week as well. Um, Yes, just looking through chat there. Um, Firefox, I would uninstall Firefox, reboot, reinstall it, and then reapply Adobe if you're having issues with the Flash. Uh, and then you might have to restart again. Uh, Flash can be a bit of a pain um, to get in. Uh, and Firefox of late, um, I've always liked Firefox, but Firefox of late for me, with the latest versions, has been a bit hit and miss. I don't know why. 
so I'm kind of flitting between Firefox, Chrome and IE. Um, but there you go, I digress. <laughs> anyway, time for me to wrap up. Um, we're going to get to the hour eventually. I'm working up to it, you know, every, <laughs> working up to it. And then eventually we'll get an hour out of me. Um, so coming up after me at 10 o'clock on the other page will be, of course, DE Talk. Um, and tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, it'll be Team Talk. I said VT Talk twice last week. It'll be Team Talk Wednesday, Team Talk. Thursday, Dave and Sav uh, will be here with VT Talk. Uh, and then, of course, on Sunday, it is Dave's Tackle Box. Monday, the Haze Hour with Kat and Keith and Sav. Uh, Kat and Keith and Dave. <laughs> I'll get it right eventually. And then back to me on Tuesday. Um, Dave has said in chat that he will try to restream the vote tomorrow, which is at 10 o'clock, the link of, what, of which was in chat a little bit earlier on. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, things will be reasonably OK. And if I can listen to it as I'm driving, at the M6 tomorrow, uh, and the A1, and the M74. <laughs> if I can listen to it um, via 4G on the way, I think I might try that. But anyway, this was Vapor Scene. Hello, goodbye, um, on the 25th of February. I will catch you all soon. Until I do, have a good week. I'm looking for my credits. There they are, looking for the credits. I've got them now. Um, I'll see you next week with some other good stuff. and. Uh, I'll see you then. <laughs> Tati bye. Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.